between technology and the needs in restaurants, uh, frozen product was becoming quite uh, a popular item. Frozen vegetables, uh, frozen uh, beef patties, etc., cetera, uh, were quite in, in demand. And so we added on, as you can see here, 1969, a freezer. And you can see each building gets a little bit taller as we go. Real quick, the first building being here, second edition here, third edition here, we've gotten taller each time that we go. Uh, so we take advantage of uh, the uh, cubic square feet. The, uh, Say that in a few what you just said. Increase the height for the, to so utilize more cubic square feet uh, in the height, of, in, the, in the footprint that you have. In 1971, oops, I forgot my yeah, yeah. book. Here it is. <laughs> We expanded our products not so long, so quite a bit. So this is an example of what was a sales book. If you can see that, um, it's quite lengthy, and it was put together for all practical purposes manually. I mean, they might have a printer that copies it and everything else, but somebody manually had to type the original one, prices, item numbers, that sort of thing. And so, what we uh, did, or need, by really by uh, by force, we got our first computer, 1971. Um, and so, but of course technology back then with computers, as you can uh, maybe able to see, but magnetic tape. So basically a lot of things were keyed on a keyboard onto this magnetic tape, take the tape off of that machine into the computer room that had to be temperature controlled, special built, load it up again, and it would then go into, quote, the computer. Um, but we needed this uh, technology not only to streamline the sales books, but, of course, keeping track of the inventory, accounts receivable, payable, all of those things were starting to, to grow to a point that, at this, up to this point, were all kept manually on a, on a ledger. Um, so it, uh, it was quite a, a big move. To enter a new item into the computer, the old punch cards, if everybody ever remembers, you had to punch holes in these cards, and they drop it into a deal and read it, and that's how a new item would get added. So it was, it was as we know today's technology, quite primitive, but it was a big step forward. Uh, for the company. 1974, sales continued to grow as you can see, 8.6 million. Now we need larger trucks. You know, if it wasn't one, it was not technology. Now it's, of course, uh, operations. A uh, picture of some of the trucks we had. You know, hindsight, I would have maybe told them to slow down because I had to wash those trucks. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, we had to move in it from gas to diesel type trucks. 1975, we're at $10 million. Sales by customers, little, you're not going to be able to read it, and I can read some names uh, type to it, but a little comparison from 1974 to 1975 of some of the top customers. It's actually the, uh, one of the top 50 customers we had. So at the top of the one on the left, is, these are all food service, restaurants on the left. As you can see, that list is a little longer than the one on the right because the grocery stores were still growing, but there was just fewer of them. But Happy Joe's was on the top of it. Happy Joe's, in that two years, uh, doubled its sales with us uh, in, between 1974 and 1975. So a number of these customers are still today customers of TPC, or PFG, Performance Food Group. But there's Happy Joe's, there's Oakland Home, uh, there's the school systems are on the left-hand side. Like I say, a number of them are still in business and, and doing business with TPC. Right-hand side, you get Eagles, Geekmans, Hy-Vee, back then still. Um, so... Uh, moving on to 1976, this is the year that I joined the business. America's bicentennial year. And this year we had 75 employees. Uh, my father showed you back, uh, I can't remember, 1933 or whatever, there was seven employees. We've got 75 employees in 1976. I should have gotten, I didn't know he was doing that. I should have tried to figure out the payroll at this point and <laughs> see what that was. Probably about the same, though. <laughs> <laughs> a few of these employees back here probably agree with you, right? It wasn't high enough, right? But, uh, but with that, uh, when I was me joining the business, we had three generations working the business at one time. My grandfather was uh, still alive and, we, and involved in the business, my father and myself. And it was really a, a very... Uh, um, Good emotional time, I guess, to be able to have a business that old, be involved in that. It's something that I didn't know anything different. I'd grown up with the business. 
uh, you know, my whole life and uh, look forward to being involved with. So it was a, it was a great moment in my life to, to be able to start that uh, tradition. Uh, and so yeah, it's, uh, it was, and there's not many businesses that go three generations. And of course, it was talked about how many generations. At this point, even though it was three working it, I was the fourth generation to be in the business, mm -hmm. and my brothers. And actually, for a short period of time, several of our kids worked in the business. And so there, at one time, there was a fifth generation, uh, fifth gen working in the business. Talked about my wife here. I, of course, just started here. It started this, uh, this year. I met her in 1979. We got married in 1980. And so uh, she worked for Happy Joe's before this. So she was in the restaurant business, came to work for TPC. That's where I met her. And, uh, and then, of course, the rest, as I say, is history. It's been 32 years this year uh, that we've been married. She unfortunately couldn't be here. But. So that's where my uh, journey ends. I'm going to have my brother Tom pick up from there. Good afternoon. My name is Tom Tomes. There's one thing I learned from my son just the other day. He says, you know, there is nothing, there's no such thing as a mistake, just a good story. <laughs> so I want to share one. You can imagine this... Um, can get it to sit up here. It's about 45 pounds of pickles and pickle juice, right? If you can imagine this perched up about two stories, along with about 15 of its friends, all stacked up about too, too high with some tape wrapped around the top because, you know, it's a little wobbly, right? You can imagine that it's perched up there. And the look on a young forklift operator's face when he nudges this pallet and it begins to free fall towards the hard concrete and the sound that it needed to make when it landed and as sturdy as these lids are the lids don't stay on at 20 feet right? that was one of my first uh, stories of working at TPC in the warehouse. A story that you, you rarely forget and your older brothers never forget. <laughs> Did they take you off the forklift? Yeah. <laughs> it was a short-lived career. But it was one of the beginnings of uh, starting as a forklift operator and working through my career to ultimately um, have the honor as being CEO of Thomas Presser Company um, after spending a little time as a CPA along the way. So that's my history, and um, uh, certainly honored to, to be part of that. I'd like to take just a minute and introduce, uh, or, or, or introduce you all to people that are not presenting today. Um, the first I'd like to introduce is, is the person on the left, which would be my aunt, Lorraine Kendall. Many of you know her as Punky. Um, she is my father's, uh, my father's sister. Uh, certainly grew up around the business and witnessed a great deal. Uh, Punky, could you stand up real quick for us? And um, certainly. Of course, up there on the right-hand side would be my mother, Mary Tomes, who was, um, as you can imagine, um, very influential in the development of our history. Two other people that are with us today, that uh, I am one of five children, um, so I have an older brother and a younger sister that are not here. Um, you will see them in the lower right hand corner, my brother Steve, he covered many areas and he was a right and left brain person because he worked in, in the computer environment as a system, systems analyst and developed some of our, our newfangled technology as we came forward, as well as uh, was one of our marketing people too and created things, even the logo you see in the corner was, was something that stuck with us for a very long time and that's my brother Steve. Uh, my sister, Mary Beth Tennant, uh, again, couldn't be here, worked from about 89 to 92 or 3, worked in the front line for a customer service, and then headed up our cash and carry operation, which at that time was in the back of the warehouse. You see the photograph. We had tucked a spot away for expansion, but we opened uh, our warehouse up to the public. So the time period I'm covering uh, is 1977 to 1990. Um, it was marked with a little bit of Quad City tradition, a lot of growth, and a lot of innovation. Um, the first bit of tradition, which any of you uh, who've lived here more than three months um, have, have probably seen, witnessed, or heard, okay, 
was the fact that we can spend billions and billions of dollars for a high-speed rail, right? But we still have not figured out how a 12-foot truck can fit under a 10-foot bridge. <laughs> not a mistake, just a story. Um, but that was one of, I, I wish I could say that was the only truck we did that with, uh, but I can't. Okay? So that's a Quad City tradition is to, to, to wreck your trucks in the bridge. So the, so the other tradition too that we, we think we're part of uh, this year, March, or last year I think was 1940, or excuse me, it was a 40 year history of uh, what is now the John Deere Classic. Um, used to be at this time was the Quad City Open, uh, Hardy's Golf Classic, PGA. It was a very tenuous time. Um, the tournament went year to year, barely was just holding on, couldn't find sponsors. Well, we were a part of a group that helped sponsor through that, created a hospitality tent for our customers to come to. It was a very simple concept, very simple tent, some tables, just a nice event to thank our customers, come see the golf tournament. It evolved over six years. I won't tell you how much we spent on the last month, on the last year, but we were building gazebos, landscaping, we had air conditioned tent, wood floors, white tablecloth luncheon with wine and lamb. Um, and, and we didn't even know this thing existed, but we got this m magazine article that basically said uh, TPC's pavilion named PGA Pavilion of the Year on the whole tour, uh, PGA tour. So um, a little bit of of tradition in regards to the Hardy's Golf Classic, now the John Deere Classic. Um, perspective in regards to what our economy was in this time period in the 80s. Um, you'll see a chart, it's so hard to tell, but the chart at the bottom is our GDP, our economy. Uh, early 80s was a pretty rocky time. Uh, lots of swings in growth or lack thereof. We had a lot of uh, high inflation. So it was a very challenging time for our country or our economy. Average growth for those that time period was about 3.23% per year. Um, during our this time period, the company was averaging about uh, 18 and a quarter percent annual growth. So we were able to, to uh, plow through those times. But that's a little perspective as to what was happening. First thing, again, another expansion. You've seen this picture over and over again. Uh, it was a million dollar industrial bond, which you'll see on the side, which is pretty big stuff for us, right, at that time. So we issued a million dollars, which I'm pretty sure was the most money we'd ever borrowed from anybody at that time, uh, ever. Um, and that was in 1979, expanding our freezers and our office areas, you'll see uh, highlighted on the slide. Then we jump to 1992. If we look, we look at a few laughs back there. Remember those? Yeah, anyway, so this was pretty hot stuff in 92 or in 82. I found some board minutes and I, I saw in there they were announcing the ordering of two MSI units, or they're called Telzon units also, right? Um, and these were handheld units that our sales force could go out, take orders, and download their orders via the phone. And nowadays, that seems pretty trite, uh, but back then it was pretty hot stuff. Um, in, in 82, we ended up evolving in the early 90s to what was tablet computing. Now, this is 15 years before the iPad, right? Uh, we, our salesmen had in their hand, about the size of a phone book, um, the technology in their hands, a PC, that they could basically order via pen system um, back in the early 90s. So we were always kind of on the bleeding slash leading edge of, of technology. 83, uh, Stu Tomes uh, decided, you know what, I can't do this myself. Um, I need to build a team. And he introduced the core team in 1983. Again, kind of a management style of today, uh, but back then it was um, basically breaking the mold in regards to how family businesses were run. So he surrounded himself with people that were qualified and talented and really basically allowed us to grow, not just the brick and mortars, but the people aspect of the business. 1986 was our first, what I'll call true acquisition. We, act, we acquired a company called Valley Produce, another family-owned business that uh, had unfortunately not been able to navigate all the 80s, um, but um, uh, the two families got together and merged and ended up to be a great cultural fit. Uh, it strengthened our produce business. And just briefly, because I see Verna back there. Verna's back there, one of our longest term employees, and she came from Valley. Verna, can you stand up real quick, please? <laughs> She's here. 